Welcome to a broadcast of the recent Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at 9.30 at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page, then click on View Agenda. Okay, it's 9.30. Can we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All, 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 Good morning and welcome to the October 4th meeting of the Loring County Board of Commissioners. Our thought for the, today is Proverbs 24, verse 17. Don't rejoice when your enemies fall. Don't be happy when they stumble, for the Lord will be displeased with you and will turn his anger away from them. And this morning our uh, dog warden has our dog from the kennel. Good morning. Today we have a, about a seven-year-old uh, male pug. He's in kennel number 40. Uh, he's available for adoption today. This is not your style. We have 27 other dogs in the kennel, so come see us. Thank you. Can, can we all just take a moment of silence for all the victims of uh, the shooting that happened in Las Vegas this past week? Thank you. Madam Clerk? Um, commissioners are proclaiming October 6th is Manufacturing Day in Lorain County, and Douglas will have their um, kickoff event that day? Correct. Friday morning. Um, we'll do the annexation decision. The 36.15 acres expedited to annexation peti petition from Eden Township to the City of Valeria, Attorney Kenneth Fisher and Attorney Dennis Navarre, agents. Uh, Jerry? That's at 940, right? Well, yeah, I mean, it doesn't, we can do it now. It's not a public hearing. It's just oh, a decision. Okay. So we just figured we could get that. Jerry, um, we had a conversation yesterday about the map and the, the fact that the ability to read the map is uh, impossible. Um, I know I have a problem with going forward with that annexation because of that. Well, I met with the uh, engineer to try and um, look at the issue that had been brought up by uh, Jason Monshin last week um, in the process of doing that at least. I was unable to, to uh, read the map. Uh, if, if, and I don't want to speak for the engineer. I think his conclusion was that he believes there is not an island, um, but it's very difficult to tell that by reading uh, the map that was submitted. Um, if you if you look at the maps, um, there's probably ten words on it I could read. I can't read the legend. I don't know if you can. Um, but uh, uh, I, I don't know how you make a determination that it's an accurate map when you can't read it. Um, there's not a whole lot of law out there. There was a decision that came out of Greene County. It's a Court of Appeals decision, so it is not necessarily binding on you. Um, but it came out in 2014. It's kind of been the decision that everybody's following um, you know and that decision basically said it, it, it focused on uh, one section the revised code that talked about the description and the map and it basically said look there can be substantial compliance for everything else but you you ought to hit that right on the nail mm -hmm. 
and it also said that you cannot amend after the original petition has been filed. So I understand there has been a subsequent map that is readable, um, but at least according to this decision, which is at this point the best law out there, uh, the map and the description are supposed to be nailed and they're supposed to be nailed when you, you filed it. Um, you know, you are supposed to make a, a determination that an accurate map and description has been submitted. And I mean, if you folks can read it and you think you can do that, then that's up to you. But um, the engineer said he couldn't read it, I couldn't read it. Uh, I can't even read the legend on, on, on the thing that's been submitted. So I, I don't know how you make a factual determination that the map um, is accurate. You're supposed to be able to follow uh, the parameters and, and identify the parameters of the area to be annexed. Um, as I was explained to Matt, I, when I was in law school, I was a title searcher, so I know how to, you know, I'm not an expert, but I at least know how to read those things, and, and I couldn't do it. So, and I, I, you know, I thought what was telling was last week when we were trying to figure out whether Jason's objections had any merit, we didn't use the map right. that they submitted. We had to get another map right. out. So, like I said, it's, 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 your, it's your determination to make whether you think an accurate map has been submitted, but I don't know uh, how you can do that when you can't read it. Madam President. Yes. Um, you know, I once again took a look at, at the uh, annexation map. Uh, I know I'm getting up in age. Um, <laughs> but I took another look thinking, uh, I'm sure I can eventually read this thing. Uh, with the glasses on, with the glasses off, couldn't read it. And, uh, you know, as, as I was indicating uh, to the clerk, you know, if I was being asked to, to sign a paperwork to buy or sell a home and couldn't read something, um, I wouldn't be signing it, and I'm sure my attorney wouldn't be recommending that I sign it. Um, you know, we had delayed things last week. I thought we were being very respectful and professional. Uh, and respectful of the process, um, asking that we get something clear. And now I understand something clear has been submitted, but it's my understanding that um, if something was resubmitted, doesn't the clock start again? Well, the, the, isu the issue is, is, and again, it's a Court of Appeals decision that is not our Court of Appeals, but like I said, if, if a Court of Appeals makes a decision that everybody thinks is wrong, usually, the, Matt, you were at the legislature, the legislature will amend it. So the fact that there's been no in, a, in action or been no action by the legislature kind of is an acquiescence to the, the the law out there. And that that case law says that in this particular type of annexation, an expedited to, it's done when you file it, and you cannot amend later on. So. But at least, at least based on the law that's out there, we're stuck with what was filed at the time it was filed. But the, the new map that was right. submitted doesn't match the original map that was submitted. Um, I'm not seeing that it's submitted as an evidence document B. Is that what it was? And uh, I gotta be honest, uh, dates yeah, at the I bottom. Didn't pay too much attention to uh, the it, I mean, it, you know, when you look at a map, you should be able to hold both of them up, and all the information that's on that map should be the same on both maps. And it's not. So we have to make a decision one way or the other today. So if we were to deny this, would they just then have to start all over? And what Which is, that? you know, something, again, I, I, I suggested and I looked at my notes back at September 1st that it, it might be best to try and clean this up. So, yeah, I mean, you know, we all know that they can resubmit. They will eventually get right. Get um, you know, we did this with Grafton, and, you know, they resubmitted. Um. I mean, the, the way that the annexation process has been set up, especially this type, is to make it real simple. Uh, the only thing you have to do is submit information that can be read. And I'm not able to read the map. That makes it pretty simple. Yeah. Do we need to take comments, or you just want to make the motion? May I be heard? I think I would sure. courtesy you. Uh, sure. Can you speak? Okay. Hey. We need your name and address uh, first. Certainly. Uh, my name is Kenneth Fisher. Business address 2100 Terminal Tower, 50 Public Square. Attorney for the uh, 
petitioner. Uh, firstly, in regard to the uh, statutory requirements, uh, 709.021 and 709.023, there's been no additional territory added. Uh, the map itself and the legal description has been uh, uh, confirmed uh, pursuant to uh, September 1st, 2017 uh, correspondence uh, to the Lorraine County Commissioners from Peter Zwick, PEPS, Chief Deputy Engineer, who I believe uh, is in the audience uh, today. And again, I know this is part of the record. It's been submitted uh, in the second paragraph. We report, meaning the Lorraine County engineer, that the legal description accurately describes the perimeter of territory now petitioned for annexation. And I believe Mr. Zwick is in uh, possession of the full map that that has been submitted. There's been no additional territory added. And that is what Mr. Innes uh, is, uh, is uh, referring to. Uh, the legal description is accurate. The map is accurate. No additional territory was added since the time the petition, the expedited type two petition, was submitted to the board. The board of commissioners is respectfully uh, required to make a decision based upon the face of the petition, which is sufficient as a matter of law. And again, Mr. Zwick is in the uh, audience. And again, I reference his September 1st, 2017 correspondence. The legal description accurately describes the perimeter of territory now petitioned for annexation. No additional territory has been added since the time the petition was submitted. The map on its face is sufficient as a matter of law and fact. Mr. Ennis? I guess I would just challenge anybody to come up here and read that map and and read it. And and it's not just the description. It's the statute says the description and the map. And the engineers indicated that it's not legible to him. Right. May I respectfully ask when he said it's not last week legible to him? Last week. I believe it is legible on its face. You don't want to read it. You don't want me to hand that to you right now to read it. You will not be able to read it. And I don't know who in the room has the best eyesight possible, but maybe you can read it, but can't read that at all. We made a simple request for you to bring us a map that can be read, and basically you ignored that request. Well, right. No, they, they did bring subsequent maps. It's not the same map. It's not the same map. Mr. Commissioner Lundy, certainly not ignoring our request. We're working uh, diligently uh, to uh, address uh, concerns of Mr. Innes, of uh, the uh, county engineer, of uh, others uh, that are interested in this, uh, in this proceeding. And again, uh, respectfully request that you approve the petition as it has been submitted in full compliance with code requirements 709021 and 023 and on its face is sufficient as a matter of both law and fact. Peter Peter Swick, Chief Deputy Engineer at the County Engineer's Office. Um, the map, were you able to read the map that they submitted with the original request? No. Un unfortunately, the original submission, which was the small illegible drawing, is not legible. And I stated that in the letter dated September 1st that was just mentioned. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Monchin, I'll give you a minute. Yeah, if I may, Commissioners, uh, Jason Monchin. Uh, Eaton Township Trustee, uh, 10720 North Reed Road, Columbia Station, zip code in Eaton Township. Uh, again, they're going to argue that at one point there was a letter drafted by the engineer that things were sufficient, but again, that's a guide. Um, I would also argue besides the map being illegible, and we had to bring our own map to show you, uh, again, there is the argument of the city completely surrounding territory in Eaton Township. Um, 
they're going to argue that it's more of a balloon on a string type deal, but the statute says completely surrounded to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west. If this annexation happens, it will be completely surrounded by the city of Lyric. Um, also, uh, as I stated last meeting, the legal description is not accurate. And uh, with those arguments, those are almost three of the f seven that are there to deny this. Um, and plus the other arguments we had with uh, the uh, ordinance by the city of just maintaining parcels owned by Chestnut Ridge LLC, that would only handle X amount of feet in front of the property. There's no agreement to go on down the road, uh, which uh, you know the co county presented to them from going to Dewhurst all the way to Durkee. Uh, we don't have that in writing. Of course, I'm going to get calls from our residents. Where's the plow truck? Mm -hmm. Why isn't this road paved? This, that, where's the snow fence? I want a light at Bender and Chestnut because of Fieldstone, which is also a Lyria development. And there's other prior annexations prior to my time that still aren't even developed in the area, which will cause even further chaos. So uh, I would respectfully ask you to deny this and that since the city of Valyria can come to these meetings, that they come to the meetings that we offer with both the potential developer, uh, their attorney, the county, and the city, and we all get together and work this out instead of just doing some hodgepodge thing where there, no one has answers after the fact. So, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. One final comment, if I may, before you vote. I know you've got a busy agenda, but w w one final comment. Uh, I would like to address uh, the island issue, which is separate from the, uh, from the map, uh, and again, my last point on uh, the map, uh, referring again to Mr. Uh, Zwick's September 1st, 2017 correspondence, he does indicate uh, that a full-size map um, uh, is required, not eight and a half by 11 inch reduced, and that's what was resubmitted, a full-size map. It's the same map, it's just larger. So to say that the uh, description of the territory contained in the original uh, submission has changed is inaccurate. It's the same map, only blown up. Now, in regard to the issue of the uh, island that uh, uh, Trustee uh, Manchin just uh, referenced, uh, there is no island. Uh, and according to 709023E5, uh, the unincorporated area of the township must be completely surrounded by the territory proposed for annexation, and it clearly is not. Uh, there's a parcel that's uh, owned by the city of Lyria that is not uh, part of the uh, property territory to be annexed to the city, and there's frontage on this uh, road uh, in the township. So it is not an island. It is not surrounded, and we would like a separate finding on that issue, uh, if, you, if you would, uh, in addition to the map issue that Mr. Innes has uh, discussed. Thank you. And again, I would just like to say that that is a road right away that he is talking about that parcel, not actual property uh, that is in the city. So therefore, it would be completely surrounded by the city. I, I don't see anything in the statutes that say the road right away is part or not part of that. If you look at it as a whole, it's completely surrounded by the right. city. Gotcha. Well, we need to make a decision. So. Um, I would make a motion to deny based on the fact that the map is not able to be read. I would second that. You, you would make a finding of it's not an accurate map. Finding mm -hmm. that it's not, not accurate. accurate. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Any further Did discussion? Any? Yeah, I was waiting I'm for sorry. discussion. I was just waiting for discussion. You guys <laughs> going ahead. <laughs> sorry. Uh, uh, as the other ones we've dealt with, and I understand uh, we've gone through a lot of these expedited twos, and Jason always brings up valid issues as we go. We'll still have a sewer issue, and we're going to have a road issue, an agreement that things will need to be contingent upon taken care of. Uh, I know City of Larry is going to get this done. It always happens just straightening up the paperwork, but based on the advice from our legal counsel, uh, you know, it's something we have to deal with, and you see the, where the board's going. So I would say go refigure it and submit the paperwork properly, and address the issues between the road concerns and your proper map. Eric, you've done this for years. You've been in front of us for a lot of things, and Tim, so uh, 
that's about all we can do with it at this point. I, I, thank you. Thank you for your comments, Commissioner. And uh, Eric, of course, is standing behind me and uh, <laughs> has nodded. And uh, there will be a, a, a maintenance agreement uh, adopted by uh, the ordinance. And uh, if it hasn't been already, I'll have Eric address that. Well, may, well I, I don't know that it matters at this point. But you we, need to state your name. Eric, Eric Brunig, you. um, 131 Court Street, Assistant Law Director, City of Valeria. Um, and yes, the maintenance agreement has been um, tightened up um, for last week. Again, I given what the comments I'm hearing at this point, I don't know that it matters for this particular proceeding, um, but that just addresses the one issue. Um, so we do have an agreement in place. Um, of course, as we mentioned last week, the ordinance requires us to maintain the road per the statute. Um, this agreement would require us to maintain the road between, what is it, um, a little bit east of Dewhurst? Dewhurst and Durkee. No, not to Durkee. Stillwater. 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 Right, I know I'm gonna, my comments. I'm going to call for the question. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Mr. Kayla. Aye. So I want to make sure I understood the motion. All right. I want to make sure I understood the motion. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to uh, resolutions. Thank you for your time, Commissioner. Thank you. Thanks. Sometimes it's the original question. You have to say that one. <laughs> Under resolutions, investments. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Appropriations. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Transfers. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. No advances, no repayments, requisitions. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Travel. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Bills. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Under the commissioners authorized various personnel actions as indicated on the summary sheet for employees within jurisdiction of the Lane County Commissioners. Mr. Cortez. Thank you, Madam Commissioner. I do have <coughs> potential hires uh, at uh, Children and Family First Collection Center. Uh, I'd like to talk to the board about those and purchase of real estate and two ongoing legal matters. All those topics will have a Sunshine Act for executive session discussion. So I'd ask at the conclusion of a regular board meeting, we go into executive session and we talk about those matters that I've outlined. Thank you. Thank you. Notify Lorraine County Safe Harbor, Inc., DBA Genesis House, a shelter for victims of domestic violence. They are mm -hmm. eligible to receive funds in the estimated amount of 85000 collected as part of marriage license fees, annulments, divorces, or dissolution fees pursuant to ORC sections 2303.201 and 3113.33 through 39. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Under job and family, amend resolution 16617, approved September 28, 2016, authorizing a purchase service agreement with Medina County Sheltered Industries, DBA Windfall Industries, Wadsworth, to provide a work experience program for supplemental and nutrition assistance program recipients in fiscal year 17. Amendment is to reflect the end date will be December 31st, 2017, rather than September 30th. So moved. Second. Discussion. Skowski. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Sanitary entering a lease agreement with Census USA Inc. and Census Spectrum LLC for the water meters at Pheasant Run. So moved. Second. Discussion. Skowski. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Under mental health, request auditor the valuation for five and ten year renewal of the point six mills to be placed on the May eighth, two thousand eighteen ballot under ORC three oh four and five seven oh five point two two one. So moved. Second. Commissioners, if I may just uh, interrupt for a moment. Uh, the legislature amended the process that we we do these and it was effective September twenty ninth. So oh. the paperwork we got over had been started before then. So just so you're aware, we're going to have to uh, uh, add some things. They're not big things. They just um, they just say you're supposed to say exactly what date the election is going to have and a few things like that. So just so you're aware, we kind of have a boilerplate resolution that we use, and we're going to um, um, modify that to incorporate the new things that uh, just were passed in the statute. I thought Kathleen Kern was here. I don't know. Oh, she is here. Did you want to come up and comment? The new director at mental health. You need to 
Let everybody see who she is. <laughs> I didn't anticipate there would be one coming, so we kind of, yeah, this just went into effect like a couple days ago. Good morning. So. Okay. Good morning, Commissioners. I'm Kathleen Kern, Executive Director at the Loring County Board of Mental Health. My business address is 1173 Northridge Road East, Loring, County, uh, Loring Ohio. So um, I just want to thank Prosecutor Ennis for bringing us up to date, and we'll certainly submit that paperwork and uh, adjust it to be in compliance with the new rule. Okay. Thank you. Hmm. Did you have it? No? Okay. Right. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Trail. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Under the sheriff, grant sole ownership of K-9 Hector to Special Agent Olin Martin. K-9 Hector has been serving with Olin since February 4th, uh, so February 24, 2013. And due to his age and performing daily activities, he will retire on October 9th. Special Agent Martin will release all claims and agreement to identify at cost of a dollar. So moved. Second. Discussion. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Caleb. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Mr. Cortez. No additional <coughs> comments this morning. Thank you. Mr. Ennis. Um, <coughs> I do believe Prosecutor Will wants to come over to you and talk about a, uh, uh, an imminent litigation issue. And uh, I think that's really all. Oh, <laughs> good. Okay, thank you. Commissioner's report. Uh, just a couple things real quick. Thursday, I attended a conference in Columbus for the Stepping Up Initiative, and what it, that is is trying to keep people with severe mental illness out of jail in the criminal justice system. Um, critical intervention team training is a major fact, factor in addressing this issue, um, trying to get as many police officers and dispatchers and everybody uh, trained in this uh, to help address that. Uh, Friday, I attended a seminar about how the cloud works and how it could benefit people and businesses. Pretty interesting. Um, kind of like this kind of secret thing that a lot of people don't really know what it is. So it was, it was good, uh, good learning experience. And then yesterday, we had our first ditch hearing for the Freeland Ditch Project. Seems to be that every, all the residents are in favor of that. Um, they have had flooding issues in that area. So uh, we had no, no, I don't think we had anybody say no or There's complain. Here. Yeah. Well, I mean, in writing oh, yeah. or anything? No. no. They were yeah. all no. glad to happy that's happening good and then last night uh karen shaver had a great Oktoberfest at st lad's the food was amazing hoagie uh did that so congratulations to karen she does a nice job in lorraine and in my report uh, amongst those other things uh mm -hmm. commissioner lundy and i attended the 30th anniversary of the negro business women's uh dinner at lorraine county community college well luncheon uh, again, a great turnout. Congratulates them for 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and Commissioner Lennon also did the roundabout ribbon cutting yesterday with Avon and North Ridgeville at 83 and Mills Road. You know, which we'll see how it goes. I heard your comments on the radio. This morning. <laughs> <You can. laughs> Make sure you yield. So <laughs> I think uh, there'll be an adjustment, but you know, learning curve. But I think everybody once they get used to them. I mean, I love them when you get to major cities. I mean, just getting to Washington D.C. and the car is tough anyway. But the roundabouts right. make it so much no, easier. Does. So I think it's important to point out our partnership in that too. Mm -hmm. Tid no. money. Yep. Okay. Also, want to address Lorraine City Council the other night. Uh, they did a resolution. Uh, against the board of commissioners and in you know they approved a contract for their steel workers who we've approved our contracts for our steel workers but i saw the adjustment is it's been a very topic of conversation and articles as we're in negotiations on what happened to their, their health care uh thank you mr krakowski for getting all the information but uh what they ended up doing and as comparison from uh lorraine county they increased their family medical premiums by about 40% to their employees. Uh, they went from approximately 124 a month to 205 a month for the employees. Uh, single premiums went from 51 to 80. They took out the vision premiums and the dental vision and the dental premiums and the employees are gonna pay 50% of both in 18 then 100% in 2019. Uh, they increased the uh, co-insurance uh, from 1,000 for a single to 2,000 to a family, where ours is 600 and 1,200, to 1,500 for a single and 3,000 for a family plan, $1,800 more than us. And then you put a little caveat in here to save their health care plan. They will pay up to $500 for premiums on someone else's plan if you and your whole family get off our insurance, quote unquote. <laughs> so I mean, just to bring up is they want to talk about what we're doing here, uh, just some of the things they did there. So. 
End of my report. It's good information. That was adopted by council. Well, City night. Council passed it, yes. Same night. Okay. Thanks for that information. Um, I want to advise everybody we have our uh, final Lakefront Lorraine County meeting that is coming up on Thursday. We've been working on putting together a lakefront plan and strategy for Lorraine County. Uh, we've come up with a number of concepts of things that would like to be done on the lakefront uh, that will help promote uh, lakefront economic development and tourism. Uh, I think you'll find a lot of concepts to be interesting. Obviously, the devil's in the detail, which means when it comes to where the resources are going to come from to make some of these projects possible, obviously will involve a lot of uh, private and, and public type partnerships. Uh, the consultants have been tasked with the uh, responsibility of putting the pen to the paper, coming up with what projected costs could be for some of these uh, concepts that we're looking at and how we might move forward uh, to secure uh, either some grants or some funding uh, to start to bring some of those to fruition. That'll be uh, tomorrow night, uh, 6 to 8 p.m. at Lakeview Park. We'd encourage the public to come out, see these concepts, give us the feedback, and uh, uh, it's your lakefront, so um, we want to hear from you. Also, I had the opportunity to attend Council President uh, John Dietrich's uh, fundraiser over there in Amherst last week. Um, a very nice event, good turnout there. Congratulations, Lorraine County Rural Electric, looking at uh, uh, using and experimenting some with uh, solar power, which is kind of an interesting direction to be going. Uh, congratulations, as Commissioner Kahlo pointed out, to the Lorraine County section of the Negro Business Women. Uh, a great event, very well attended, uh, uh, great speaker, and uh, lots of um, black, uh, black educators who were recognized, African American educators. Uh, they are doing an amazing work with, uh, with the youth in our community. Also, congratulations to uh, Heritage Avon Lake. That's a historical society for Avon Lake. They held their chili cook-off, uh, had seven different samples of chili. One of them was extremely hot and had a boomerang effect. Came back on you later, but, uh, but the chili was good, and I guess we have to wait till the paper comes out today to find out uh, the company that was associated with each one of the, the chilies and find out who the actual winner is. Uh, so congratulations to them. Um, can't say enough about uh, the parents and the students and the staff at Murray Ridge. We are just so blessed uh, to have uh, Murray Ridge in this county. Um, for those of you who don't know the facts, I would certainly encourage you to have conversations with the parents of Murray Ridge students, the staff over there. Uh, the state is making a very strong effort to put those guys out of business. And uh, we, uh, I'm very upset by it. It's something that I was fighting when I was in Columbus. It's continued, especially under this new administration. Uh, the 50th anniversary event that they had, the kids put it together, uh, helped, you know, they organized it, set up the tables. You should have seen the artwork of the students. Um, just can't say enough about the, the commitment that's made to these uh, individuals. Uh, to help them uh, uh, through life and support them through life. So congratulations to Murray Ridge. Uh, the ribbon cutting for the roundabout at Route 83 yesterday was interesting. I think it's first roundabout that it is first roundabout we have in Lorraine County. Uh, when I was in Columbus, oh, LaGrange. LaGrange. LaGrange, you're right, LaGrange. LaGrange. Okay, yeah, I figured that one out. So, okay, I should be able to figure this one out. <laughs> but um, anyhow, they had Mayor uh, Gillock and and uh, Mayor Jensen got into the first vehicle to go around, and as soon as Mayor uh, Gillock began, he started to turn left instead of going right. I think he did that deliberately. Um, but uh, uh, it works out well. You just have to, to yield uh, to the other folks, not try to speed up and get in front of people. And because you're making all those left-hand turns, it's not a NASCAR track. Uh, but uh, so we'll see how it works out. But it opened bright and early this morning. Had the ribbon cutting, as I pointed out, uh, we partnered with Avon and North Ridgeville, a great partnership. Um, and with our county engineer, we were able to bring about $250,000 to that project. The project was about a little bit over a million, I think $1.2 million. Um, but anybody who's ever sat on Route 83 trying to get through that intersection at Mills Road, oh, it was just a nightmare. So uh, hopefully this will, will resolve that issue. I was really surprised how fast they got that done. They, they, they really did it quickly. Did quickly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, congratulations, Auditor Karen Schauber, on a Oktoberfest fundraiser yesterday. That was good. And I saw my uh, colleague tending bar back there. It was nice to see him working. So. <laughs> <laughs> friendly jab. Friendly yeah, jab. Friendly jab. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
October 12th at 2 o'clock will be my records commission, board correspondence. I move the reading be waived. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. Public comment. Anybody wishing to address the board this morning? We just need you to state your name and, and where you're from, and, and then you can have three minutes. My name is Mary Heck. I live at 41629 Hazelwood Street in Elyria. I have some questions. I want to know why you have hired these security guards out of Michigan and how much of my tax dollars is being wasted on this to guard nothing, really. These people aren't harmless. I want to know when you plan to go back to the bargaining table and settle this contract. It is affecting the whole community. It trickles down to even the smallest business. Mm -hmm. And then I want to know the people that are service there, the customer, the cu uh, Client, people clients. that you service there, uh, their daycare has been cut off. The mother says depend on minimum wage jobs to get by because you subsidize the daycare, the county does, so they can get a better job. They're being turned away at daycare daily because their vouchers have not been made. So when is this going to be settled once and for all and go back to bargaining table and bargain fairly with a group of hardworking, honest taxpayers of this county? That's all. Do you, what do you want? Do you want to respond? Do we, should we be responding? I know our. You know what our position is. Right. right. We're in bargaining. Yes, Jerry. I'm waiting have? for you to respond to the lady. Well, obviously you don't. Well, you don't we, respond we to nothing, so I'm not amazed. To, for the union to come and ask us to come back to the bargaining table. Well, they don't have to ask. It's <laughs> bargaining is a two-sided offense. You have a right to make that request too. All right. My name is Jerry Donovan, 5109 Oak Hill Boulevard, Lorraine, Ohio, citizen and taxpayer. The lady ahead of me made a lot of comments that I was going to make. However, one thing I would like to take issue with is Mr. Cordes seems to relish in the agreement that was negotiated in Lorraine. For his glorification, edification, and information, I would advise him that you're two different type of entities. You are a county, they are a city. It's like comparing apples to oranges. But then again, that's not unusual with these commissioners. I also would like to know why we are hiring security guards. If it's because these people aren't in there, then obviously I can only conclude you don't trust the ones who are left in there. All right? And I could understand that. Don't sit and shake your head. All right? I would also like to know the duration of their term of hire. Is it indefinite? Do I not get answers either? We're, we're trying to get to a point where we can get to the bargaining table and resolve this issue. Well, we I'm quite certain the president or the, or the chairperson of the negotiators for the union are here. Give her some indication when you want to go to it. As I said, having negotiated a lot of contracts in my life, that is up to either one of the two sides to request a meeting. You don't have to put all the onus over on the union. You know, I'm going to say this. There was a gentleman called Edgar Bergen, a great ventriloquist, had one dummy to deal with. It obviously is very clear to me that Jim Cordes is three. Thank you. Yes, good morning. Is it true? My name is Can you one second please? Isn't it is it not true that we have asked the union to come to the table three times and they have not asked us to come to the table once? That is that is not true. That is not true. Can you please state your name? Thank yes, you. name and address. My name is Marnie Kovach. I live at thirty twenty six Meister Road. I am a Lorraine County resident and taxpayer. I have been to that office since the strike has implemented twice and sat in line, sat in a chair for three hours, not to have any response. Wait and get to the window, then they tell you, you need to come back. The phones don't work. The big smeal in the paper, they don't work. 
they you worked know. before this all happened. How come all of it not? When is it going to stop that you're going to atta stop attacking with the newspaper and start meeting with these people? These are educated men and women, I'm sure, that have many degrees and are working for well below their wage that they could work elsewhere for. But they're working for the county and choose to work for this county to represent the people from this county. And that apparently doesn't seem to be getting done. I'd like to know how many of them in here have degrees that are being very much underpaid as to what all sits up here. You know, come on. They need to get back to the table. We've got children yes, out there that need the help. And like you said, three times, whatever, three times, they've been three times already. How many more times do they have to go? How many more times does it have to be gone? How many more months? I'm sure they all need to be back to work. This is ridiculous. They all have small children, grandchildren, families to support. They don't have incomes like the people sitting here. Nowhere near the incomes you people get. Sir? Ralph Nash, 38261 Chestnut Ridge Road, Luria. I'm here about the annexation. I don't believe that uh, Luria needs to annex that property it has enough property. It's abandoned right now. Broad Street, Cleveland Street, East Avenue, West Avenue, and Middle Avenue. And if it isn't abandoned, it's turned into a parking lot. They do not need to annex this property to virgin farmland for their benefit for tax, for tax advantage. And I'm against this annexation. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to address the board this morning? Seeing none, I move that we go into executive session as outlined by the uh, administrator and assistant county prosecutor. Second. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. This has been a broadcast of the recent Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at 9.30 at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorainecounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page. Then click on View Agenda for a printable copy of the agenda.